What's up all you cool kids? This is Daisy Collins of TsunamiRose.net coming at you live from my craft room here in Las Vegas, Nevada with another junk journal video for you. Um, if you are into junk journals, please do subscribe. I pretty much post a new video every single day, you guys. Hello. Sorry about missing yesterday's live. Life happened. Anyways, so I'm going to be starting on a new uh, Christmas junk journal since I finished my last one. I'm surprised, but I did. I'm going to be using this quilt um, fabric that I put together last year. Uh, there is a video of it. It's just from last year, though. But um, I figured I'd use it up this year, and uh, who knows? Maybe I'll make another Christmas journal after this. I don't know. Anyways, today we are going to get started by making the actual book from our cereal box chipboard. So um, I have my, one of my favorite cereals here is Honey Bunches of Oats. I love Honey Bunches of Oats and all of its varieties. <laughs> okay, so I have my Fisker's Position Cutter, which I really love. And what I'm going to do is I am going to just cut off the edges here. And I'm going to set those off to the side. I actually should throw them in the trash instead of keeping it for my side because I don't need this. Okay, one second. Okay, so our goal here is to, I always make my journals the same size, so process I already know by memory. They need to be eight and a half inches tall. So I go to eight and a half. Cut that up like that. That's a bigger piece, so I'll keep these. Um, and then what we need here is a, and of course you can make the journal that you make in whatever size you want. I use the size eight and a half in height uh, because it just makes it easier to figure out. It's the size of a piece of paper. So then I know that if anything, hang on, I need my butter knife. I don't see that anymore. Need that button. Anyway, so I'm trying to open this box here. But I am a little potato, so this is hard. <laughs> this is hard. Okay, maybe scissors. I have scissors next to me. Okay, so now my covers, my cover sizes is five and a half so i have it at five and a half right here if i'm not mistaken this cutter is great it's just really terrible for five and a half i don't know why it does not mark five and a half uh very properly let me see um mm -hmm. and I'm trying to look for the numbers okay so five and a half is technically more like yeah, no, it's fine. It's five and a half right here. Okay, it's, it's a little past five and a half, but I'll let it. So a little past five and a half. <laughs> if my uh, measuring thing was more accurate, it'd be five and a half on the dot. Hey, Jen. Hey, Sue. How are y'all? Getting started on a new junk journal cover, y'all. Five and a half. So now we have whatever size spine this is. This is uh, two and a half. Two and a half, and then the um, covers here are five and a half. So that is one that one of them that we need to cut up. The next one, uh, we're basically going to cut up the same size as that one, except for the fact that we are going to make it a bit uh, not as wide. So it's not going to stay intact and wide. That's the only difference. Joy, what's up? What is up? Late night crafting. <laughs> okay. I got my little 7 Eleven sponsored mango drink. I'm just kidding. I'm not sponsored. <laughs> I'm not sponsored. Okay. So, eight and a half tall. I'm sorry. Yeah, eight and a half tall. What am I talking about? Eight and a half tall. You're breaking your measurements. 
I know, right? Crazy. Crazy. No, these are the same measurements as always. As always. This would have been smart last time. <laughs> okay. Okay. So my I need a cover piece for my cover that is uh five and a half inches wide. Let me cut it from this side actually. Five and a half wide. I've made many job channels, but I, then I always end up getting asked if when am I gonna make full size job journals? <laughs> okay. So I have this cover, and I did cut it the same exact size as this one, so I'll have to cut off a little bit, but that's okay. I forgot I had to be shorter. <laughs> okay, so from this side, I need five and a half. Actually, we need five. Well, five and a quarter. Yeah, make it five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. And then the spine, we need to get the spine out. And whatever size the spine is, we're gonna cut it a quarter inch less. So let's just do it right here. Let's see if that is less. Okay, so got our pieces. It is less, so that is good. Could be a little bit less than the cover, so a little bit less. Hey Chris, what's up? What is happening? Just gonna make this just a smaller. Okay, okay. Okay. So now we have our pieces for our spine that are a bit smaller than our actual um, cover. So we're going to adhere these all together. So glad you're all I missed yesterday. I didn't go live yesterday, my bad. <laughs> just had, just got too caught up in what I was doing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to sand, sand, sand. So I just got some sandpaper right here. And you don't have to use any particular kind, any kind will work. And I'm just gonna scratch off just a little bit of the paint on here. Or the printed thing, whatever you call it. On this side as well. I try not to get too much here, but I mean, I can't help it, but it's fine. It's pretty reinforced. Okay, there's that. Now we scratch up. Hey, Patricia, what's up? Now we're going to scratch up these. And I'm using wax paper because I don't want to um, shred up my expensive poster board. <laughs> My expensive dollar store cookie board. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit more here. Okay, nothing too crazy. Let's do the next one. And we can glue them all together. And I can try and see if I can get that fabric onto some heat and bond. All off the piece. Don't forget to give me a little like if you haven't yet. Don't be stingy with those likes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, so let's get the spine done. Look at that. Not even 10 minutes and I already got a lot of this done. That's great. That's what happens when you've done this meal. <laughs> okay. 
done and done. Dust off of here, like nails on the chalkboard, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. See, Jen's not stingy with the likes. You go, Jen. <laughs> okay, so we're going to glue these chipboard pieces to the inside of the cereal box here. And I am going to use my favorite glue. Y'all already know I'm going to use Turbo Tacky Glue by Elise because I love it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get some glue here. I have the nozzle opened up wide. I have my wide nozzle on this one. Where is my paintbrush? Yes. I am using my little silicone brush that I love to get the glue spread down and around, down and around like that. And I'm um, using a piece of uh, parchment paper. It's kind of like my desk, desk protector. Okay, need a little bit more glue. You gotta work a little bit quick with this glue because it does dry pretty fast. It doesn't have a lot of water in it, so that's why I love it. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so let's get this one here. Of course, I forgot that this whole spot over here is not going to have anything on it anyways. There we go. Now they are together forever. Okay, now I am going to need my brayer. This thing, and I'm going to use this to make sure that they get good contact with glue and everything. Make sure they are nice and aligned, and I'm going to make pieces and off to the side. Good. You need this tool. This tool is very important to me. Very important to me for the cover process. Is this journal going to be or themed? This is going to be a Christmas journal. Just a regular Christmas because I didn't have um, any pink. I didn't put any pink into this cover last year. So it's going to be all just regular traditional pink Christmas. I mean, Christmas. <laughs> just going to use my regular Christmas stuff on there. Of course, I'll throw in some pink here and there. But uh, it's not going to be pink themed. See the. The edges there aren't exactly together, but you know what? We'll live. It's fine. If you're picky about it, you can go back in there and change that, but it's fine. For now, it's okay. It's going to get covered by fabric anyway, so I'm not really tripping. And that, let's get the glue here on the spine. Yes, I'm excited. I already have a bunch of <laughs> chunk journals that I need to finish. So I don't feel like starting anything new <laughs> before I finish those. But of course, here I am. This doesn't count because this is Christmas, so it doesn't count. <laughs> this one I'm actually going to finish, and those other ones can wait <laughs> until I'm done. Oh, I still have a lot of um, Christmas embellishments and such, so that's why I'm like, okay, well... It's not December yet. We can do another chat journal. You can get a bottom of chocolate here. It's just looking at me. Okay. Turn this side now. Here. 
Maybe I could have used a little bit more glue. Maybe that's why I dried up. I don't know. Okay, so this one right here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Make sure they're aligned somewhat. I don't want it to be off. The main chipboard is the most important piece. So I don't want part of the inside to be kind of off to the side from there. You could, of course, cut it in the next step. <sighs> For the next step. Okay, so this is now our chipboard cover. And I'm going to let it dry overnight. And it's going to warp. Um, it's going to want to bend. But don't worry about it. We'll fix that. All you have to do is kind of bend it the opposite way that it wants to bend. And we'll be doing that basically until we cover it up in fabric. So until then, it will bend, but it will not be bendy uh, in the end. Rest assured of that. How was my day? My day was cool. My day was pretty chill. Pretty chill. I finished my camp on my video game today. <laughs> I finished decorating my camp. So happy. Okay, so here is my cover. It is nice and reinforced. And in the th technique that I used, this ends up being the thickness of a book, which is what I love. Again, don't worry if the edges didn't really glue down. You do want them down, but if they come out apart like this a little bit, it's fine. Okay, so the next part, and how was your day, Jen, by the way? I forgot to ask. I hope you had a good day too. Okay, so the next part we're gonna do is um, the fabric cover. We need our fabric cover to be paper. So to do that, we're gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna need our cover, and I, actually I need to iron it. It's been folded up for I don't know how long. So let me go ahead and iron it. Oops, that means I need my iron. Whoops, sorry about that. I need my iron. And I need my ironing pad. I'm plugging my iron. I forgot about the step. <laughs> How? I don't know. I don't know. I'll probably come back tomorrow and do the sewing on it because that might take a minute to do. We're gonna get the cover ready. So let me move a couple things here because I totally forgot about this iron step for some reason. Okay, I don't want it to melt stuff around. <laughs> okay, so I got my iron, it is heating up. And um, I need my ironing pad. I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear. My ironing pad. Let me look at these darn seams here. <laughs> I was new to quilting last year. I've only been doing it for like a year. And by quilting, I mean making quilt covers for my junk journals, not like actually quilting. <laughs> So my seams here look a little messy. <laughs> it's okay. I don't think it's anything we can't fix. The good iron. I don't think this was ever ironed down. Um, okay, we're good. Let's iron. Okay. All your seams to lay flat. Nice and flat. I'm going to do the other side here. It's 
some lace down here. Totally forgot about this that I made it last year. Because <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, oh, I just made a junk journal and I said I didn't have any Christmas fabrics. Oh, and also I found some Christmas fabrics. <laughs> I found some Christmas fabrics. I'll help these up. That's cool. Let's see. This here's the last part I gotta iron down. After this, it's all nice and flat. And I guess last year I didn't have a lot of Christmas fabrics either, because I had a substitute <laughs> with some green and red fabrics that I had. Come back to the iron soon enough. Now that my cover is flat, let me move this out of the way. And what I need is my cutting mat. Whoops, my cutting mat. And also my rotary cutter. If I got glue on my elbow, it always makes me itchy. I need to make this the size good enough for my cover. So I need to find what I'm gonna do here. It needs to be bigger than the cover. So, I guess this part right here we'll have to do because it has space above and to the sides. Okay, very cool. So let me get my cutter. On that side, we're good. It's this side over here. It needs to be trimmed up. These kids out here yelling. Oh yeah, that new, I put in a new blade not so long ago. Cuts it into like butter. Second, I got glue on my fingers, and y'all know that drives me crazy. I hate having glue on my fingers. Okay, so now we have this part over here to cut. I'll leave about an inch of fabric to each side if I can. If I can. I'm just gonna cut that like that. Okay. I'm just going to even this out because I hate when it's not evened out. <laughs> it really bugs me when it's not even piece of fabric here. Does this have to be perfectly cut to size? No, not right now. I just would like to leave an inch around. Because I cut it down, I whittle it down a little bit. But this is good. Okay, so this is good. Now we have our cover piece that we're going to use here. Butter. <laughs> I love butter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this piece of fabric into a piece of paper now. So let's grab my heating pad again. My heating pad. <laughs> my ironing pad. Heating pad comes way down in a couple days. Okay, so... We got our cover here. Oh yeah, I forgot I like to use this to cut my heat and Oh, I need, I, you know what? I have a nice big space, but you always need more space, right? Always. <laughs> I forgot to grab my heat and bond. 
and my packing paper. Okay, so next step is we need to cut ourselves a piece of heat and bond that will be the same size as this cover here. And um, here's a little extra piece of heat and bond, and I do make projects with this. So I'll put a uh, light, so that way I know that this piece is heat and bomb light. Otherwise, you could get them a little messed up. Hey, Beverly. What's up, girlfriend? Okay. Beverly, you're light. You're fired. I said you're fired last time. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't let it happen again, Beverly. <laughs> so I just lay this here. And what I'm going to do, I guess I don't need this. I'm just being a little extra with it. You can use scissors with this. It doesn't have to be a rotary cutter. <laughs> if you are going to be making drip journals with fabric, I do suggest that you get yourself a rotary cutter and a cutting board. It really makes life a whole lot easier. Okay, so I'm close, I'm cutting it as close to the fabric as I can. This, I could, I could use it, I, it's totally a usable piece. So let me just write light on there. Not, it says life, but it's supposed to say light. <laughs> Okay, so now we get the iron. Oh my god, this cutting board. I have like, okay, hang on. I have nowhere to put this cutting board. Okay, here's where we're gonna put it. <laughs> okay, so let me put some stuff away here because I'm getting a little claustrophobic. What are you eating? <laughs> Milky Way uh, salty caramel. Salted caramel. I love it. Oh. Push the best. <laughs> okay. okay. Now we're going to iron this. Mm. I need a new piece of parchment paper. Salted caramel. Oh my god, don't do that. I love me to do salt with the caramel. Okay. So I'm trying. So what this heat and bond is, it is um iron on adhesive. <laughs> I had to remember. So this piece of plastic, which is the heat and bond, it has a um layer of adhesive which is activated when you iron it on so i have the heat and bond sandwich between my fabric and some parchment paper the heat and bond has two sides to it one is textured and shiny the other side is uh just uh satin or not shiny at all you want the shiny side to be against the back of your fabric, so that way it adheres the glue to the back of the fabric. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my iron on hot. I'm going to let it sit on one spot for about 30 seconds. Then I'm going to pick it up and move it to the next spot. You don't want to slide your iron around. Sweet and salty, yes. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Tasty good. Okay. Okay, don't slide your iron around. Hmm. 
What's up? Talk. What I actually want to do is iron on the back of it. I iron on the front so it kind of gets a hold of the fabric. Then I flip it around because I want to melt on the actual adhesive. And you'll see, you see the fabric here showing up really clearly and over here not. And that's because this is now adhered to the heat and bond and the fabric. <laughs> Gotta save the rest for tomorrow. Halloween candy, that sounds good. I think Milky Way is keto. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, Milky Way is keto. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Don't take my advice. I'm not a diet channel. <laughs> Okay, we're almost done. The whole sewing on it, I'll have to do that tomorrow because that's going to take at least 45 minutes. I'm going to say at least 45 minutes on the sewing. Has to be. So again, being very careful, trying to get every spot glued down. I'm really glad I found this fabric. <laughs> Would have totally wasted it for another year. <laughs> okay. So I believe now it should be all adhered. Let me take this whole parchment paper off the table, off uh, to the side so I can wave it around so it can cool down because it's too hot right now to handle. Oh, I forgot, Jen. What do you do with the small pieces? You know what I actually do is I make these, um, I make these journal cards here. This is actually fabric. And these are all the little leftover pieces from when I do projects like this. Um, other little pieces of heat and bond, I will attach fabric to it and then slice it um, in like three quarter inch and then attach it to these index cards. So that's actually fabric that I use heat and bond with and then parchment paper. And I make these little things with it. What else? I put other things. What else? Where is it? Here's one. Again, this is a heat and bond, just little extra pieces of heat and bond. And um, I take those other pieces and I kind of collage them on here. And this turns into like a little pocket. So once I have a nice amount of heat and bond scraps, I will do that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take our fabric off the heat and bond. And it's going to basically be a big old sticker. Big sticker here. You're going to be less than five yards of this heat and bond if you do use heat and bond. So make sure to um, recycle. Make sure to, you can paint on this. You can glue on this. Um, big pieces like this are always helpful to me when I actually make my junk journals. When I don't have pieces of heat and bond, I will use my parchment paper. So I've actually already used up all my heat and bond doing all the other projects, all the other all um, plastic part of it anyways. Okay. So now we have this shiny part of the fabric, and then we have the regular side of the fabric. So the shiny side of the fabric, we are going to glue, because that's the glue. We are going to adhere that to some parchment paper, or not parchment paper, my God. <laughs> to some packing paper, Daisy, Jesus, concentrate. <laughs> Packing paper, that's what we're going to do. 
And packing paper, I get this at Walmart. It is for just that when you pack and you have dishes and you have photos and or photo frames and you don't want them to break. So you would wrap them up in this paper right here, this uh, gray paper. And then I'll set here a little bit. What I actually want to do is the same as the other side. I actually want to iron on the back of it. I want to iron on the back because then I'm actually melting the glue instead of trying to go through a layer of fabric and then get to the glue. They sell it at Lowe's too. Cool. I don't know what the price is. Maybe it's even better price there. I just kind of always go to Walmart to get it. But maybe they have it better there. Um, you can use different types of paper, of course. Um, I've even attached my covers, uh, my fabric covers to cardstock this way. So if I just have regular fabric that I want to turn into a junk journal, I'll use the same method, but attach it to cardstock. I've done that in the past and those junk journals look really cute. Um, you could also attach it to tissue paper. Um, I would, if you're going to use tissue paper, just know that um, the it's really sheer. So if you have sheer fabrics, they are going to basically show up, like say your book is red. If you have sheer fabrics and you're using like tissue paper, then that red book might show up through the tissue paper. So that's why I've, uh, I've gravitated towards packing paper because it is opaque and uh, the fabric, even if it's sheer, it does not um, show up like that in the final results. So that is why I like packing paper. <laughs> That's my essay on why I like packing paper. So again, this is gonna take a minute to melt this glue. And here now, since we don't have the plastic backing, you could move your iron around. You could glide your iron around. So let's make sure this works here. And we're almost done with tonight's live. Tomorrow, I will come back at night and we will sew on the cover, on the fabric cover. I do got to do all my little cute stitches in between. That should take up a nice 30, 45 minutes. Um, and then I'm also going to come back tomorrow and do a flip through of my Shabby Sheet Pink Christmas cover. I mean journal and I'm also going to have a new tutorial out tomorrow on that same cover of course through the magic of editing it will not be four hours long <laughs> four hours long I'm really hoping it'll be a short tutorial last time I tried to make a short tutorial it was still half an hour long <laughs> so I am working on narrowing it down I don't know how long it'll take me but I did film it today and uh, hopefully like I said if y'all haven't seen it I will, um, or if you like and prefer short tutorials, I'll have that for y'all. Okay, we are almost, I think we're done practically. I can see the fabric all throughout. That's the most important part is that you make sure that your fabric kind of like shines through the paper. <sighs> so, here we go. Now I have my cover nice and done. I'll go ahead and iron it here just for the fun of it. <laughs> just because ironing is fun. And uh, yeah, so that is it for today's episode. Catch me tomorrow when I go ahead and um, um, embellish upon this uh, journal cover here with some pretty stitches. Um, so we're gonna do it up here for Christmas. You guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Got the cover, chipboard cover done and the fabric covered adhered to our paper. So that way the next step, uh, embroider or uh, put the pretty stitches on it and then add the cover to this book here. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you know what? And I, I forgot about the inside fabric. What are we going to do for the inside fabric? Scratch that. I got 20 minutes. I got 20 minutes. I can get it done. The inside. Oh my gosh. I really didn't even think about the inside fabric. I didn't consider it one bit. Who are we talking to? Uh, Jody, hi Jody. Hello from Western Oklahoma. I've been enjoying your videos. Thanks for sharing. 
uh, why do we need this step? Because I um, stitch on it and uh, it's harder to stitch on just fabric than when I have it on this paper. And also because I end up um, gluing this whole thing to this cover. I don't like to use things like uh, Fabri-Tac, so I use this. I didn't even think about the inside cover, y'all. I didn't even think about it. I might have to take a second and contemplate what I've done. You know what? I do have these Christmas fabrics. And I don't know how big they are. Let me see. I was already saying my goodbyes and everything, y'all. But you know what? I can't. You know what? I might have... No. I might have to make one. Like, patch some fabric together to make it. Because these here are not big enough. So maybe tomorrow... I'll also get that designed. I didn't even realize it, y'all. Usually I get this whole step done in one. And I didn't, I did not plan that. <laughs> I did not plan this. Let me see if I'm looking through my, I'm looking through my fabrics here, through my holiday fabrics. Oh, you know what? This would be perfect. This would be good. I don't know if it's the size that I need, though. Let me see. It is the size that I need. That's convenient. So this is a string quilt that I made last year. Put this up to the side for now. And uh, let me iron it. Let me see what we're working with here. Because it has been folded up for a whole year. <laughs> Okay, you guys, hang on. Redo, redo, redo. This, if this works anyways, it'll be a redo. String quilt that I made last year. I'm trying to iron it out with an iron that's not hot enough. <laughs> I think this would work for the inside cover. But let me iron it just to make sure. I can't believe I like, said bye and everything. I forgot one of the biggest steps. I can't believe. And this has all the fabrics that are in the, on the cover. So that's why I'm thinking this could be a good idea here. And if you don't know how to make string quilts, this is a whole other project that's also fun to do. You can look it up on YouTube. It's called a uh, string quilt. Sometimes I think they call it a coin quilt. The string quilt is what you can find it under. Okay, so let me see. Let me see. This works. <laughs> I got lucky, you guys. It works. <gasps> okay, very cool. Because this one specifically needs to be a, a quarter inch all the way around smaller than this cover. So this is the perfect size to kind of whittle it down to that. So, I'm excited. I'm not leaving. Give me one second. I'm going to get this done today. And tomorrow I can, I, I need to um, sew on it. So, we'll get the sewing done for it. So, let me just cut it down just a little bit. It has a touch of gray. I like the color. Yes. Okay, so let me just slice this part off here. Okay, oops, okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the outside cover. We are going to get some heat and bottom here, then we're going to get some packing paper out right here, and then we'll call it a night because I keep knocking stuff over. Okay. So heat and burn. I don't even know why I moved my cutting board off the way. I'm not backwards tonight. Okay, again, if you are going to work with fabric junk journals in any fashion, in any form, definitely do yourself a favor and get a little rotary, uh, a little cutting board. I think I got this for like 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks from Walmart. And then get yourself a rotary cutter. And uh, take note on the packaging, the size rotary, the size blade that you got, 
and buy them on Amazon. Because when I first started, I was buying my blades at Walmart. And while in the case of an emergency, that's great. <laughs> they want to sell me like two blades for ten dollars, and I can buy, I can buy about twenty blades for ten dollars on on Amazon. <laughs> okay. Do you have videos on the type of cover daily? I do have a video on when I made it. Um, I'll have to get you the link. Sure, let me see. Hang on. Hang on. I know I have. I should have it. Um, look up uh, Snow Rose Christmas string. Well, and I think the first time I made it, it was actually a fail. Okay, here it is. And I think it's the same cover that I made. So let me get the link to when I made this video. So let me see. Uh, Christmas string quilt. If y'all want to check out when I made this. Sometime last year, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. So, let's get the iron. Turned it off, of course, because I forgot about this part. Got my blades on Arteza. I don't know where Arteza is. I don't know her. Hey, Letitia. What's up? What's up? Okay. I don't know why I feel like I want to put some chili in that mango drink. <laughs> Might just be in my super Mexican side. I feel like it needs some uh, Taijin. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get this ironed down. And right now I'm just trying to get it to be partially glued down so I can turn it around and iron on the back. And I'm also going to um, stitch on this, I think, because it's just a couple of stitches. So I'll go ahead and make sure we have coordinating stitches for this too. So this is just going to be a quilt in, quilt out type project. So that's cool. Because I don't have a big enough piece of Christmas fabric. <laughs> So thankfully, I don't know, I must have thought about using this sometime last year when I made it. Or I just make stuff just to make videos and just to make stuff just to have some fun. And if I use it in a year from now, that's cool. <laughs> I do try any. Oh, you get your blades from AliExpress? I haven't tried that. I, ever since I bought them from Amazon, I have not had to buy new ones. So I'm still working my way through. Again, trying to get this glue down. Try to make sure my fabric is see-through. And you will have kind of like a dotted matrix on your fabric. So do take note of that. That is normal. Okay, I think it is all glued down. So this is actually one of the easiest um, quilting techniques you can use. Okay, I got my tape right here. I'm just moving it up and down so I can pull down and can use it. Okay, now that it's not hot anymore. And you can get glue on this parchment paper from the heat and bond, this extra over here. But um, you can always take it off with your your nail you can feel where the glue is and then you can just scratch it off the heat and bond does the same thing so sometimes i will use my heat and bond in place of parchment paper because it acts the same way okay so now we got this let me just look at it make sure okay so we're gonna peel it off peel it off And now, get this other side from the parchment paper. Should be good enough. And then I'm gonna glue this on here. I'm just gonna make sure I don't want it to intersect with this other quilt I put on here. Nope, perfect. It might not be perfectly straight, but that's fine at this point. Okay, so now we're officially done with this video. 
now that I totally remember that I almost forgot this part right here. So tomorrow we will come back. We will stitch on the covers. I'll come back tomorrow night to do this. Because I have some videos planned out for release tomorrow. Um, during the day, I'm going to go live and do a flip through of my pink Christmas junk journal. And also I'll be releasing the pink Christmas junk journal cover tutorial, which keep your fingers crossed for me. I'm trying to keep short. <laughs> So definitely keep your fingers crossed for me. Keep me in your thoughts <laughs> as I go through the editing process tonight. Um, okay. So we're all done. It should all be glued down. Let me just put it over here on, on the side just, just in case because I don't feel. Okay, that makes me feel better. Okay. Okay. That was like total crisis averted because... <laughs> I totally spaced out on the inside cover like Daisy. Hello. I'm all talking about how I know this technique at the beginning of the video. Look at me now. Okay, so we got both of our cover pieces here adhered to our packing paper. I'll cut them out and then tomorrow we're come we're gonna come back and stitch all over this stuff. So make sure you come back and check me out tomorrow if you can live. If not, um expect new videos from me every single day, just like normal, you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight, and uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Okay, have a good night. Bye.